for this movie, you've talked about being fascinated by why people feel this need to believe and sometimes set aside rational thought to, to have these beliefs. Why do you feel like people constantly need to do this? And do you think they recognize it as setting aside rational thought? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's the sort of unknown thing, isn't it? That's, that was my outstanding sort of discovery, was this people, people's need for this, to believe in something unknown and the mystery of it. And it was, it's, com it's compelling to people. And uh, I don't know, it's, it, it's fine when it's entertainment, you know, and, and, but it, when, it's, when it becomes shady is when it's, you know, people who are vulnerable and weak and, and then they're preyed upon. But, um, and most of the time, that's probably how it gets applied, don't you think? Generally, I mean, you know, this the, the De Niro character is a version of, you know, the sh the sort of, the, you know, the big uh, magician showman style with also that faith theater thing and that TV evangelist thing, and uh, so you know, so people claim to cure cancer. That's a, that's dangerous territory you're getting into. But if people are desperate, people will keep searching and searching and searching. Which do you find more satisfying? when you're able to be fooled or when you figure out the trick? Uh, when, when you go to see David Copperfield, you know that everything is alive and you want to believe on that. You don't want to be there for a couple of hours spending 200 bucks to figure out that he doesn't fly. We all know that he doesn't fly. That's part of the, that's part of the thing. But you try to fool everybody in the sense that it, it's not about surprise, it's about challenging everybody. I love the fools that don't, don't end when they end. And you find yourself thinking of them a year, a year, a day later, or two days later, or three days later. So that's what really pleases me as a creator. If you get it, if you achieve that. What do you think, Kelly? Do you, as as someone who generally doesn't believe, do you in that situation? Do you try to will yourself to go along with it, or are you always looking for kind of a, a giveaway? I can like it, when it's entertainment. I went to see Copperfield and Chris Angel in L.A. when I was researching this, and it was pure entertainment, and it was amazing, and. I, it's like it's like saying to actors or directors when you go to a film, are you constantly trying to figure out how did they get that shot or you know how did he do that? You're just in it and you're just watching it and enjoying it. Kelly, I you know you've had I mean such a fantastic career, so many memorable parts. How much interest do you have, if at all, of doing something like a romantic comedy or something that would totally lighten things up? Um, you know, I was thinking about your Inception co-star, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who also has, in the last decade or so, really seemed to transition mostly to, to pretty serious films. Is that something you prefer, or would you...? It's just a matter of taste, really. I have no, uh, sort of, you know, I don't say don't send me any romantic comedies to my agent, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's generally the films that I enjoy watching, and the sort of stories that I enjoy telling and, and also reading are, I guess, more involved in the sort of, uh, the darker side of the sort of psychology, I guess, not always, but um, I think, you know, yeah. in that world, there's the scope for drama tends to be greater, so, you know, if you're talking about sort of the end of the world or life and death, it's, there is more at stake than the wedding planner, you know, there seems to be... <laughs> People might die. There's, you know, and that that appeals to me. I, I I like human beings that are under pressure. I like seeing what the pressure does to the human psyche and how, how people react to that. But again, I'm, I you know I just did a, a play there which was like loads of physical comedy and I I, I love Buster Keaton and you know I, uh, all of that stuff and I, I do go and watch those sorts of movies occasionally. But in terms of the taste and the real films that that sort of moved me and affected me like the great movies of the 70s or all of those movies you know they tended to have more serious striving for something more serious and that's what you hope you are so how much more interested would you be in those films if there was more at stake or there was more action going on or or if everyone was you know wearing a bracelet that could kill them at any moment write the script man <laughs> <laughs> one thing about this year already we had this means war which was an action romance comedy and this week seeking a friend for the end of the world is a romantic comedy set against the apocalypse right i didn't even heard of those movies i must go and watch them <laughs> watch well, them. i know a lot of people are asking you about the dark knight rises and understandably you don't want to give anything away tell me what do you think batman's weakness is batman's weakness oh that's a good question uh don't say krypton <laughs> <laughs> 
It's uh, it's bats, isn't it? It's my bats, I think. From what I remember, you really had the bats you're mixing. He had a bad experience with bats, didn't he? Um, I don't know. I, what I love about Batman, um, and I've said this before, you know, why he's the coolest superhero is because he doesn't have any superpowers. Do you know? He's just a really rich guy that does a lot of push-ups and has a lot of toys. <laughs> do you know? And and it's again, it's and like if that's a perfect example of the sort of the psychology of that character. You know, what made him who he is, and it's fascinating uh, world the way that Chris is opened it up and explored it and it is quite dark, those movies are quite dark but people adore them. I know you said you didn't feel like you filled the bat suit quite right, what, what was going through your head when you were wearing it? <laughs> oh man, I mean you do your best, you know, <laughs> you do your best. Uh, for me that, 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 it, it's not a big deal, it was just more of a, it was more of an opportunity to actually get to work with Chris then, to do this little screen test and to work with him and then it turned into something else and that was really more important. Nostalgia is very dangerous, you know. I, I think it's artists should be about moving forward. Nostalgia can be the death of any sort of art.